also would suggest that they should have less phosphorus in their food to prevent or rather avoid kidney problems. Would you also recommend the same? I, it's unfortunately phosphorus is present in almost all food, but it is more present in the non-vegetarian food more than the other way. Okay. And dairy products, which is the hallmark for the protein intake for the vegetarian people, has got also high phosphorus. Okay. You cannot avoid phosphorus completely. Yes, you may cut down the phosphorus intake, but what we do now is to use phosphate binding agent, what we call it. Okay. The phosphate binding agents are that prevents phosphorus absorption from the intestinal tract so it brings down the phosphorus mm -hmm. so that the calcium phosphorus level is maintained and the high parathyroid hormone is not secreted and the PTH level what we call it parathyroid hormone is high it produces the erythropoietin resistance so that if you prevent the high phosphorus level it will also help in correcting anemia as well as the bone problems in diabetic patients how often do you think doctors should dialysis be uh, performed? You know, we get several emails asking what is the optimum level of dialysis. I will ask you, the, I will answer this question a different way. Okay. In a normal person, kidney works 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Ideally, patients should be on dialysis 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Correct. But this is not practical. So that what we suggest is minimum they should have three times a week dialysis, four hours at a time. And if you do this thing, you will do better. I know in India many times because of cost constraint, we cut down the timings or we cut down the frequency of dialysis. But then patients are not getting adequate dialysis and they get into problem with the bone problems, heart problem high potassium and all these things so they get to serious complication after not immediately on decreasing dialysis frequency but over a period of few months to year or two sure. they get to more complications so ideally three times a week four hours at a time is the time patient requires dialysis doctor can you also tell us about the new technologies which have come in dialysis in the last 10 years because uh, there is a lot of hope uh, also that dialysis is getting better and people's lifestyle can be almost normal on dialysis. What are the new technologies? As I mentioned, dialysis quality is getting better because we are using what we call high flux dialysis, which is better in removing the toxic material from the blood. Available erythropoietin has made the life simpler for dialysis patients. Otherwise, they used to get frequent blood transfusions with the B and C virus infection, which is now less common. Sure. B give hepatitis B vaccination so they do not get the problem and we are controlling a calcium and phosphorus very well with our medication with the vitamin D supplements for the calcium calcium supplements which is always low and pretty high phosphorus level so that the patients have lots less problem with what we call secondary hyperparathyroidism and the complication and also control of blood pressure is better with availability of the many antihypertensive medication so the patient's quality of life has significantly gone up over the last 10 years time compared to before i do not know which i should say it right or wrong or not but today many of the people might have seen today's date 8th march in mumbai mirror there is a small article of nano fiber kidney which is an artificial variable kidney which is still in the experimental stage but i am sure in next few Yes, time. It is going to come in the picture so that this you would have just put an artificial kidney rather than think about getting transplanted and you can have a reasonably good quality of life with a small nano fiber kidney. Oh, lovely. Okay. Doctor, you know, there, is also, uh, there are also news reports of uh, nocturnal uh, dialysis where the whole night the dialysis will happen. But uh, do you think that technology is uh, coming, coming delayed in India? Yeah, it is coming very much delayed. Nocturnal dialysis is done six times a week, okay. every day, night, for eight to ten hours at a time. Their dialysis, what you call slow dialysis, blood flow is not kept at very high flow, and dialysis flow also kept at the medium flow. This is slow dialysis. If you do it every day, which was started in the France and is getting more popular, 
in the European countries and to a certain extent in USA. But still, because of financial constraint, it is not that common. And in India, where patient has to pay for the dialysis, and if they have to do dialysis at home six days a week, 12 hours at a time, it will be more expensive, so it's not picked up well. But if you do this nocturnal dialysis, your blood pressure is very well controlled, the anemia is very well controlled with low erythropoietin. Your calcium, phosphorus levels are very well controlled. Mm -hmm. Patient will have better quality of life. Downside is if you do six days a week dialysis, you are going to use the fistula operation, what you call it, repeatedly. So vascular excess problem gets more prominent. But we will have a solution for that also. But nocturnal dialysis is a good way of doing it, provided you can afford it and we'll do with it. Quickly sir, what can you tell us about uh, peritoneal dialysis which has been there for a long time and so many patients <coughs> prefer that hospital than doing it. So what's your opinion? I think that's a way of going it. Uh -huh. Especially if patient is staying in the remote part where dialysis facility is not common, they can do it at home. There are two types of peritoneal dialysis what you call. One is what is CAPD that is continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. You do it four times a day. In this, what we do is we put a tube into the stomach and patient puts dialysis solution in the stomach in the what you call peritoneal cavity. Okay. Patient moves around for six hours, normal work. After six hours, he again connects himself to the bag, drains out the fluid which was in the abdominal cavity and put fresh solution in and again moves around for six hours. And this is continuously repeated. That is the reason it is called continuous ambulatory where patient is moving around, okay. peritoneal dialysis. This is a good way of doing it. Unfortunately, it has not picked up well in India because Indian people are not still tuned to it. And abroad, peritoneal dialysis costs half the cost of hemodialysis, while in India, it costs equal or little more than hemodialysis because hygienic condition. If person is very particular and do not take any shortcuts in doing the dialysis, uh -huh. fact, it is very less likely and person can have a good lifestyle and this is more physiological because it's going, going on continuously seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So it's more physiological and downside is, other downside is person tends to gain weight because we are using glucose and dialysis solution. So with almost all Peritonalized patient tends to gain weight, and these are two things: an infection and gaining weight. Okay, I think that's uh, good news for type one, who is already so thin. I know, <laughs> very true. <laughs> okay, sir. Now, can you tell us about the transplant issues? Uh, you know, cadaver transplant has actually gone down, according to reports, in places like Mumbai. Now. Is that only because the laws are bad, or is it that there is a general tendency of net not uh, able to get cadaver transplant, cadaver organs? Cadaver transplant rate is not gone down, I would say. It has not picked up, I would put it that way around. Because okay. it is getting a little better, but still long way to go. In abroad, 60, 70, 80 percent are cadaver transplant, while 20 to 40 percent may be live related donor transplantation, live donor transplantation. In India, 95% to 98% are live donor transplantation, only 2% or 5% in cities like Chennai and in Gujarat, little more cadaver transplants are being done. Okay. This is due to two reasons. Public awareness, that is, is still lacking. We are trying our best to get more and also now government is trying to help us by making the laws more applicable where we can get brain death criteria certified by the trained people. So okay. the right thing I'm hopeful in next few years time will a better cadaver transplant program in India also. Doctor, there are several emails that we have got about you know, post transplant uh, uh, people, especially kidney transplant, they get into diabetes. What could be the reason for diabetes for post-transplant people? No, that what you call a no that new onset of diabetes mellitus after transplantation. Two reasons. All transplant patients, as I, many of you may be aware of it, get immunosuppressive medication. This composed of steroid, what you call calcium inhibitor CNI, okay. tacrolimus, and cyclosporine. 
and steroid also produces high sugar and so is tacrodemus so that use of these two medications mm -hmm. produces diabetes or in a, not in all patients but 20% of the people are likely to get what you call no that no new onset of diabetes mellitus after transplantation and if you want to avoid that people do switch over or now to non steroid regime Okay. And all of us are going for that thing nowadays. So we do not use corticosteroids at all except for five days after the surgery. And tacrolimus, we use it. And if patients get diabetics, we see to work to cyclosporin, which is less problematic than And non-steroid will also uh, you know, avoid uh, glaucoma? A non-steroid not only will it produce a, reduce a glaucoma, it will have a no hirsutism, no weight gain, no cushionoid features like rounding of the face, obesity, and the might of bone problem. All these things can be avoided by no using steroid sparing protocol, what you call it, or avoidance of steroid after five days. Doctor, uh, how many years can a transplant kidney last? This is where the most common question asked to all of us who are going for the transplant. It's very easy. What my standard answer is, it can last one hour to 30 to 40 years. Because we do get into some time rejection or technical problem. But now, with the availability of the newer immunosuppressive medication and better technical, mm -hmm. half life of the kidney, what we call it, used to be 13 years. So the average people will survive minimum 13 years and more so that I think I would say now with availability of the newer medication transplant kidney can be 30 to 40 years my longest patient was operated in Bridge Candy on 5th November 1979 he died last year six months back so he survived 32 years oh, his kidney was still his kidney he, he died of heart attack and this is the figure which I want to show it over here. If you can see it, yes, yes. this is the initially he gave the uh, this figure to us because at that time when we did the surgery in 1979, mm -hmm. people had thought always uh, presuming that we remove the kidney and put the kidney in the original kidney place. But now we put the uh, no, we never remove the kidney. We put the kidney in the pelvis, and this is a figure he had given to us, and he died about six months back with a heart attack. With and. He died at the age of 77 and he survived for 32 years post-transplant. Okay. And uh, how long can people survive on dialysis? Any particular thumb rule for that? In India, dialysis mortality is high. The reason for this is obviously two. Many people cannot afford it. They, they do not come regularly for dialysis. Yes. As I mentioned before, ideally they should dialyze three times a week, but many of the patients come only twice a week and some of them come once a week or when they need it. A rule of the thumb is probably mortality will be about 6 to 7 percent per year, you can say, is the dialysis mortality. Mortality is very high in the first year with a heart problem, but after they survive six months to one year time, then mortality is 6 to 10 percent per year, you can say, so that our longest patient dialysis survived for 24 years oh. on dialysis, on hemodialysis. He was a young boy and he died of not because of anything else but C virus, cirrhosis of liver. They were 24 years of my patient and in abroad they got a club, dialysis club, where they make the only member if they are surviving more than 30 years. <laughs> so the people can have a healthy lifestyle. A healthy lifestyle if you're compliant with the dialysis. I will tell you over here, just putting it mindly, okay. Shami Kapoor was a dialysis patient. He survived for nine years. This favorite sentence, which I like it, three days a week are for dialysis and four days are mine to enjoy my life. And he really enjoyed his life rest of four days. So that three days a week he says, yes, dialysis is a cumbersome procedure, but there's only one to survive. So why not? enjoy it so that he used to say that frequently three days up for Dr. Gandhi or for <laughs> dialysis or four days are mine. You used to treat him? Yeah, he was our patient in Bridge Kennedy Hospital. Okay. 
And sir, what is what are the other causes of uh, acute kidney failure, which is not uh, you know permanent damage? Acute kidney failure patient can occur with diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration. This is the commonest cause of kidney failure okay. in, in India because of the diarrhea, vomiting, and this is more common in the pediatric age group. Other is bleeding. If bleeding occurs excessive, they produce low blood pressure, what you call equitable necrosis, it damages uh -huh. the kidney temporarily. And the third one which we are seeing more and more is septicemia, or severe infection produces low blood pressure. And in India, particularly I would say, drug-induced kidney failure. And drug-induced kidney failure, all of you should be aware of it, that what we use for the painkiller, especially what you call non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug. Common names, I'll just mention it, not to degrade anything, but Combiflan, Vovaran, Dichloran, and what you call COX-2 inhibitor. Nice. These, if be taken for a longer time, can damage the kidney. So you should be very uh, careful about it. And the other thing I would like to say, not that I do not believe in alternate medicine, but if you take alternative medicine, see that you are not getting any heavy metals in Ayurveda. In Ayurveda. And if you get heavy metals, chance of you are getting into kidney failure is very high. And we have seen time and again, patients are coming to us with a kidney failure, in which we couldn't reverse it also. And some of the time we have reversed it by stopping the medication in time. Doctor, my last question is that is about stem cells. You mentioned about artificial uh, kidney, which you can use it uh, from the, you know, you can attach it to your body. But recently there was a lab which has made a stem cell, uh, kidney of stem cells, and the entire kidney is available. So do you think that kind of technology is coming very fast to India, and how much time will it take for our people to make, take benefit of that? I am not rest of the India, but I think it is even in the world it is going to take a long time to come because to kidney, make the artificial kidney in the laboratory is going to be very, very difficult. I hope what they produce the artificial kidney becomes uh, uh, available in soon and that will really solve the problem, but I think it is still far away. Still very far away? Yeah. All right. On that note, let me end this. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. Thank you.